Welcome to Solve, Solve Tank, episode I can't remember because I forgot to look it up. I'm sure it's in double digits now. Maybe this is Solve episode nine or episode 10. Um, this is getting bigger and better than ever, ever. We have a great collection of fellow SIS admin and SAS ops admins to join us today. My name is Colin McCarthy. Welcome to everybody else. And I'm very happy to uh, welcome in Sid from Freshworks, who's joining us today to show us the new uh, recently released uh, Fresh Service SaaS management uh, component of Fresh Service. A number of us, as a disclaimer, are a customer of um, Fresh Service. We do like it. And we thought this was a great opportunity to uh, expose this new feature to the larger community and get our community of professionals to ask Sid a load of questions. And then, as we do, like on a, on a shark tank, on a solve tank, we give our opinions on the product. So over to you, Sid. All right. Thanks a lot uh, for that, Colin. Hey, everyone. Uh, just a quick intro from my side. I'm Sid. I'm a product manager here at Freshworks. Uh, primarily work on uh, Fresh Service, which is the IT service management product from Freshworks. Uh, and within the Fresh Service uh, product portfolio itself, I take care of the asset management and software asset management areas in uh, Fresh Service. All right. And uh, today we'll start, uh, we'll talk about uh, Fresh Services SaaS management capability, which we launched about a couple of months ago. Uh, we were in beta for about um, six months before then. We have a bunch of customers who worked with us and uh, we were talking to Colin, Colin to see if he'd be interested to try this out. And that's how I think uh, we, we got on this uh, show. So thanks for uh, having having me here and uh, I'll get started now. Uh, do, do, do we have to do any other intros before I get started, Colin? No, no, uh, we, we know each other. We know each other. Okay, um, brilliant. We're, we're, we're brilliant. all old friends, so it's all you. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, before we get started, just just a show of hands. Uh, how many of you here are familiar with Fresh Service or Freshworks? Uh, okay, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, okay, then I'll I'll maybe uh, I don't need to spend too much time talking about uh, giving you an intro of what we do because there's a lot of things that we do other than SaaS management. Uh, so I'll just maybe quickly run through certain things in Fresh Service that might be relevant, and then we can jump into the um, uh, SaaS management uh, piece itself. And I and I, I don't have any slides. I'm just directly going to jump into the uh, product. Uh, do let me know when you can see my screen. Yeah, and, we can see it. Okay, brilliant. So Fresh Service is the IT service management product from Freshworks. Uh, this is used by IT teams just yourself to provide service to your employees to make sure that your services and applications are up and running all the time. Uh, and one of the things that IT teams also use Fresh Service for is to keep a track of all of their IT assets. Uh, this might include things like their, uh, you know, your devices, such as your laptops, desktops, all your network equipment and, uh, you know, servers and things of the sort. Uh, so that's something that uh, IT teams discover using some of Fresh Service's tools to uh, keep a track of all of their assets in one place. We also have a way to keep a track of all of these software that's installed in all of these uh, devices. So that's something that has historically been, uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, something that has been historically been there on uh, um, uh, when, when you discover devices and the software that's installed them. So you can bring in uh, installed applications and you can also keep a track of, let's say, uh, your software contracts or any other vendor contracts that you might have in your organization. So, so that's that's something that you uh, that you can do already. IT teams were always doing using Fresh Service to keep a track of all their assets, make sure that they know who owns what, who has been assigned uh, what applications, what software, and what devices uh, in, the, in their during their time in uh, their in an organization, right? So. As this move to SaaS is becoming more and more normal and we're seeing more, uh, I mean, almost all organizations move a uh, uh, portion or completely to SaaS, what we started seeing was teams not only wanted to discover their, uh, uh, you know, the software that's installed on uh, their laptops and desktops, but also wanted to see what exactly is uh, being used by their organization when it comes to the SaaS portfolio, keep a track of the subscriptions in one place and then optimize the usage of these, uh, these SaaS products. All right, so uh, this space itself, I'm sure you're familiar with this. I've seen that there's been other products who've, who've uh, demonstrated here. So I'm just going to keep this at a very high level. And I'm, I'm, I am don't know if you have any questions, you can, you can please, you can ask them uh, either in the chat or we can do this later. So what we do with Fresh Service SaaS management is we provide IT teams a, a 10,000 feet visibility into all these SaaS apps that they know is being used in the organization. 
uh, but we give them a place, a single place where they can basically get a list of all these apps, the users who are using them. And we also get them visibility into uh, uh, the usage of these apps. Uh, in some cases, we uh, integrate to identity tools such as Azure, G Suite, and Okta to give them, let's say, information around who's logging into what apps and how frequently they are using those apps. We also integrate with Microsoft 365, Zoom, Dropbox, and Slack to get more detailed usage statistics from these applications. And on top of that, we're launching Box and DocuSign over the, this week, I mean, next week, and we're launching one login for identity management uh, uh, next week as well. So all of these apps uh, provide a really high level view into what apps are being used in the organization and who's using them and how frequently they use them, right? So when you integrate one or more of these apps, what you get is if you jump to the software module in Fresh Service, you basically get a list of all the apps, like I said, it's your, it becomes your single pane of glass. Uh, this is a smattering of different uh, applications coming from different sources. Just done this so that you get a, a picture of exactly the kind of sources we bring data from. Um, and we also have our own uh, application ca uh, catalog. So we know exactly what each SaaS app is and we're able to categorize them and, and, and give you uh, give teams a high level overview of things like, you know, are there redundant applications? Are there, uh, are there applications that were not approved in the organization? And they are able to quickly identify and catalog these apps into, uh, into different categories, right? So uh, this is slightly a curated list. This takes some time to, uh, to, to collate and uh, get to this final list of apps that uh, teams know is being used in their organization. Uh, but once you get this list, what you see is, uh, you see the app names, the categories, you see the users of these apps also. And this user information is either coming in from the identity tool or it's coming from a, the application itself directly. If we have connected them, uh, in this case, some of this is coming from Zoom, some of this is coming from G Suite. So you may get the user information out there. Uh, and there's also an install stat. So this is where uh, the data that, uh, you know, we're bringing in from some of our discovery tools might come in. So if you have, um, uh, for example, here, you have nine devices where there's Zoom, uh, the, the desktop client being installed to so actually can keep a track of all of the uh, users who have been assigned to Zoom and also the uh, installations of Zoom also. And that's that's just from, let's say, keeping a track of the clients that are installed. So this might not be relevant from a SaaS uh, usage tracking point of view, but then it, it may be relevant from understanding, let's say, outdated versions of uh, devices or applications running on devices. Uh, I'm just gonna show you a couple of examples of data that we are able to pull in from different kinds of sources. So if you take some of the identity tools, uh, what we get from uh, these tools is just the app details. You can, of course, have a lot of custom fields to keep track of uh, any other attributes that you want to, uh, that you want to capture uh, for each of these applications. And then we get the list of users who've been assigned to this application in that source. So for in this case, this is Azure. So if you've assigned a group or a set of users to Azure AD to this application, uh, then those users will get pulled into Fresh Service. And we also then pull a list of, uh, we also then look at the audit logs for uh, this application and see exactly when uh, each of your users are, or employees are at authenticating to these apps and keep a track of that and then uh, create a metric for usage, which is basically a usage in a 60 day period. And that gives you a really high level uh, overview of all the users who are, let's say regularly logging into the applications and accessing the app. Uh, accessing the app, but not so regularly. This is just an ABIT 30% that we've set here now. Uh, and then um, uh, users who have not logged into an application in the past 60 days, right? So um, that's just a very high level overview of usage. And what happens is when you have this usage, I mean, when you have this apps set up and running for let's say uh, three, four months or even six months for that matter, what happens is the inactive user count that you get would then be more and more useful. So if you see a user who's not, let's say, been active for two, three months, then maybe they are, they are on a break, they might be coming back, but then you have a user who's not logged in in six months or more, you know for a fact that these are users who are, who are probably, uh, you need to go back and check if they really need access to this application at all. Uh, what, you, what you can also do is you can maintain licenses for all of these uh, software here, and this is something that all of customers already do. They maintain contracts and they set up uh, expiry uh, uh, renewal or expiry notifications. They set up the number of licenses that they purchase. Uh, so, so you have one place where you can keep a track of all the kind of contracts that the IT team owns. Uh, and what you can find with this information is, for example, if you're just looking at this uh, of this Monday.com. Uh, uh, application and you're looking and you know that it's coming up for renewal in the next 17 days. Uh, and before you take a decision on whether just to just allow the software to go on auto renew, you can look at this and say that, hey, there's 46 users who are not using this application. They're not logging in so regularly. 
And then there's also uh, about 85 licenses of not, I mean, that's not being used for this application. Uh, you have almost half the number of licenses that's not being used. Maybe you don't need to renew that, to renew, let's say, 250 licenses, but you could reduce that significantly and 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 save on uh, renewal costs, right? So that's the first uh, first type of information we're able to bring in, and this is from identity tools. Uh, the next one is when you connect, let's say, tools like Zoom, um, uh, Slack, Microsoft 365, Dropbox, DocuSign Box. Uh, because we're directly plugging into these source uh, sources, what you get is much more granular data. So the first thing is we're able to get in the plan metrics from the source itself. So you know exactly how many uh, licenses you purchased for Zoom. And uh, if you go into the users uh, tab, what you'll see is it's not just simple login information, but app specific usage information. So uh, things around okay, who's a licensed user, who's using a basic plan, uh, what are the number of meetings that they have set up in the last 30 days that have more than two users, and the first scene and last scene now is not just login information from an identity tool, but rather um, the last time someone actually logged in to uh, or set up a session, or joined a session, uh, or even uh, you know posted a session. So that's that's exactly uh, what we use to capture activity in Zoom. And there's very similar uh, metrics that we're looking for, let's say in Dropbox, in DocuSign, in in Box, in Slack. So there's different activity that we keep a track for a track of to understand what exactly is uh, is usage here, right? Uh, so, what we can do with this information? So, so uh, we just we just spoke about activity. We just spoke about how you can optimize subscriptions here, and, and that's something that you would that you would have to observe and then decide and and take some uh, take some actions outside of Fresh Service if you want to optimize the number of licenses that you uh, that you would want to renew. But let's say there's there's the, you have users here and you're you're looking at a lot of licensed users. And let me just jump to uh, inactive users here. And uh, what you will have is looking at inactive users who are licensed but have not set up a meeting in a very long time. The last 30 days, they've not set up any meetings. They've not had any meetings that went beyond uh, two users. And these users are right for, let's say, downgrading to a basic plan. Um, imagine a scenario where you have um, a, a bunch of users who are either uh, joining the organization or who are requesting for uh, Zoom licenses. And instead of just going in and adding more uh, uh, pro licenses, what you could do is you can look at these licenses and say, hey, these are users who are who have been given pro license, but they probably don't need it. And you can you can choose to optimize these, uh, these I mean, basically repurpose these licenses, right? So what you could do is you can just uh, select some of these users. Let's say you just need a bunch of them. You can say, I want to take action on these users. And we have uh, a set of pre-filled actions that we support, but then um, um, IT teams, I mean, admins can basically go and configure any action that they want here. This is just a service request form that they're filling out. So in this case, I want to downgrade this user to basic plan. I can give a reason if I want to. I'm going to initiate action. What happens here is um, a service request gets created. Uh, that's a way for us to make sure that there's a log of all actions that's being performed uh, that gets captured. But there's also an opportunity for somebody from the IT team to pick this up and then go in and, let's say, remove this user manually if they want to. Um, but then that's only if they don't want to, let's say, automate some of these actions. But if they want to automate this action, what you can do is we have another capability called orchestration center, which is uh, and what you can do here is you can basically set up a workflow and that workflow can actually go to talk to Zoom and say that, okay, there is a request and that request says that um, uh, if, if it says that downgrade the user to basic plan, we can go into Zoom and say that I'm going to now update the user and set the user type as one. Uh, in this case, I know that user type one means it's a basic plan, so I'm going and downgrading all these users. Right. So similarly, you you, you can uh, let's say you have Okta, you use Azure AD, and you and you let's say do license assignments or you do you user assignments based on uh, uh, moving users between different groups, or you want to just remove a user from an application. You can do that here as well. Uh, or all the other applications that we support for SaaS discovery also have the orchestration piece. So you can go in and perform any kind of action with respect to let's say removing a user, uh, or if you want to let's say notify the user, you can say. I, I want to go to Slack and I want to notify this user saying that hey, you're not you're not using this application and if you don't use this for in the, ne the next 30 days, we're going to revoke this access for you, right? Or you can um, you can like I said, you can directly go to uh, Azure and you can uh, uh, remove this user from the group that gives them access to whichever application they have access to, right? And um, one final piece that I want to uh, want to touch upon here is uh, just like I mean, all of these things are all of these insights that they are that you're that you're acting upon are when you go into an application one at a time and you are taking some action on them. But what happens is we also have an insights. Um, so whenever 
there's uh, uh, a new bunch of apps that get discovered right? because this discovery keeps running every single day. So when new users get discovered or new apps get added to your uh, to to uh, to your organization, that gets picked up, and uh, you, you can basically look at these apps and classify them. Uh, decide if you need to actually start managing them uh, actively, or maybe you need to reach out to the people who are using them and say that, hey, um, this is not something that's approved the organization, right? So this is very common when you're using G Suite and uh, every single app uh, or, uh, or in fact, every single application website that your employees go in and access or basically sign in or sign up to using G Suite, that will get captured. And so you, you can keep track of all the uh, users who are accessing every single application out there. Um, if there are applications that don't have an owner, that's also highlighted. If there are applications that don't have a license, that's highlighted as well. And if there are applications that have licenses, but then these licenses are coming up for renewal, you basically also uh, get an insight on how many users you have inactive and what's the potential saving that you can do based on the uh, dollar amount that you mentioned in the contracts that's there. Uh, there's also one more insight, which is called the compliance insight. And this is basically uh, this, is def this is normally shown when uh, when you have, let's say, an, a user who's been deactivated in Fresh Service, and this normally happens when you when you have someone leave the organization, and when you see a deactivated user still actively using uh, uh, Fresh Service itself, uh, uh, and, and sorry, actively using any application, then that's something that uh, we recommend uh, that user be removed from. So that's one more uh, area. And finally, when let's say someone's leaving the organization, um, uh, you you would need to know all the applications and all the uh, devices that they own. So um, it's it's super easy to keep a track of all of this because now you have all the assets that person user uh, owns. This user doesn't have any anything and all the software that the particular user has access to. So it's very easy to re revoke access to all the applications. Right. Uh, so that's a really quick rundown. I um, I did want to keep it to that uh, 20 minute mark. So uh, I this is this is everything that I want to show today. Uh, I can I can uh, I can take questions now, and I also think that there's there's a bunch of uh, bunch of uh, questions on the chat. So let me take take that first. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the, the the group of, uh, of attendees, uh, as usual, as usual, having side conversations, uh, yeah. passing notes during class while the presentation is is happening. Um, it's always good to see what they chat about. Um, yeah, we can, I'm sure, uh, keep your screen shared because I'm sure some of these questions that they're going to ask will, will involve looking at the product. Yeah. Um, who wants to, uh, who's got the first question to ask? Who wants to go first? Caleb Coy, you're getting your microphone adjusted ready. <laughs> um, I would love to see a little bit more. You were, you're bringing up the uh, orchestration, the automation feature. Uh, yeah. And I noticed that in that, uh, in that workflow, uh, one of those was kicked off by uh, a service request. So I assume that there's some sort of deep integration with the uh, ticketing system. Can you show a little bit mm -hmm. more of how that actually works? Yeah. So um... Okay, let me just pull up a workflow here. So uh, what you do with the uh, orchestration center is basically you have, uh, I mean, this is just a general workflow automator that we have in Fresh Service, which is used for any kind of ticket assignments and any kind of actions that you want to perform once a ticket or uh, a service request or uh, even changes or anything else is created in Fresh Service or is modified or any other trigger, right? So there's normally three components to it. And you can just edit this workflow so that uh, yeah, you, you get to see exactly what we do here. So there's three components to it. There's an event which basically triggers this workflow. There's a condition that you put in to check what's happening and there's an action piece. Uh, and on top of the, this is this is what you normally had. And now what we have is we have uh, an app component here. And this app is basically what I've, I've pulled in here, right? So um, uh, what you're saying is, let's say there's a service request that gets uh, created, or it could be any number of other events that, that can possibly happen here, right? So you could say ticket is created, incident is created. So there's some other change in a specific uh, property, then that uh, this workflow itself then fires. And then let's say you, you want to check for certain other conditions, either in the ticket or uh, in the user uh, who requested this particular ticket. So there's, there's a bunch of things that you want to do there. So you can uh, basically set up all those conditions here. What I'm doing here is I'm checking for the application name that is Zoom. And then I'm saying what the app action is and the action that I had selected was downgrade the user to basic, right? So uh, I'm just checking for that particular condition. And based on that, I am deciding to do, and this is a very simple workflow, right? Uh, so based on that, I'm deciding to do something in Zoom, and I'm saying I want to update the user with uh, email. This does not have to have to only work with 
SaaS management. This can work even outside of that. So let's say you have a new employee that's joining in and you need to give them access to, let's say, uh, a bunch of applications out of the box. What you can basically do is you can say, I'm going to uh, first, uh, I want to create a user, right, in Zoom. Or if you want to first create a user in, let's say, G Suite and set up an email for them, you can do that, right? So this is basically you provisioning, orchestrating uh, the users and the access to all of the applications they will need. Um, and it can also have a, a, a sequence of uh, events that you want to perform once the G Suite user is created, then you take the email from there and then you uh, use it to create a Zoom ID or anything else you want there, right? So this was basically just your complete provisioning. And this is not just provisioning, this is also for orchestration. So uh, if you have, let's say, if you want to spin up a resource in uh, AWS, if you want to modify something in your on-prem AD, you can basically do all of that with uh, orchestration setting. Cool. Thank you. Sid, I'll, uh, uh, I'll say I have to run out early, but uh, I was paying attention and you got me enough, you got me curious enough to actually go to the website and see if I could set up for a free trial and uh, test this out for a little bit. So I want to say thank you. Uh, for showing up. Uh, I have to jump off early, everyone, but I wanted to say thanks, Sid. I uh, appreciate the uh, demo. Excellent. Thanks, Brian, for, for joining and, and signing up a demo. That's, uh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, um, Thanks, I just want a point of clarification on that last topic mm -hmm. because I do not use Fresh Services ticket system. Um, you would have to manually configure those fields in the ticketing forms in order to use the workflow as you've configured it here, correct? Uh, some of these are default fields that already exist in Fresh Service when you sign up. So if you go into the uh, sign up for Fresh Service, you just get the default fields. But yeah, you would have to configure these workflows. Uh, when you when you install some of these apps, you also get some default workflows that have the entire flow set up. Uh, but you would you would you would have to go in and, and modify them to fit your uh, your workflow itself, your organization's workflow. Thank you. Um, how are you pulling the user metrics? Are you pulling it from like an identity provider, or are you pulling it straight from the platform using the platform's logs or API? Yeah, that's a great uh, question, and I'm sh I, I'm sure many others want to know how how um, I guess accurate that usage metrics are and, and where you are getting them from. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, there's there's just two ways in which we're bringing data right now. So the first one is identity tools. So when when we use identity tools, it's just uh, when I'm when I'm showing you this activity information, this is just the frequency uh, uh, at which the user has been authenticating to an application using this tool, right? So if you have an application that, let's say, never times out, and you sign up once and sign in once, and then it just is uh, you know, active forever, then you will see that user as inactive, right? Um, uh, for a very long period of time. But if you, for, for, if you set up session timeouts well, uh, and, and the user has to sign in, Every time they let's say uh, open that application, then that would uh, that would that would basically get trapped. So we're basically uh, tapping into the audit logs in Azure AD and Okta uh, in one login to identify exactly who's logging in when, and that information gets refreshed every single day. Uh, the first time you set up this integration, we pull in 60 days of data. So uh, if you start now, you'll get uh, from uh, let's say uh, March onwards, uh, and then. Um, then every day that data gets, uh, you get one day of data added every single day, right? So that's from um, identity tools. But then if you have, let's say you have Zoom coming in from uh, Azure AD, but then you also have a direct, we also have a direct integration to Zoom. So in that case, then this data is directly coming in from Zoom. So this activity information that we're showing here is then um, the login information to Zoom, the, uh, the the last time someone created a session. So this is basically we are we're going into the reporting APIs for Zoom, understanding uh, what kind of sessions are getting created, who's joining what sessions, and then based on that, uh, create a, uh, a, a usage metric. So different different apps, different uh, usage uh, different usage metrics get captured. Yeah. How many apps do you have the API dedicated information set up for? Um, right now, it's uh, it's these apps that we have. So it's uh, three identity apps and four direct integrations. Uh, we have uh, two more that will three more that will launch uh, next week, which is one login for IM and uh, Box and DocuSign. And then we're adding Smart Sheets, we're adding Atlassian Suite, we're adding Adobe 
There's a bunch of, uh, there's a long list of apps that we keep adding. Uh, and of course, the APIs for all of this uh, exist. So if you want to pipe in data from some other source that you have, or if you want to get something that we may not be supporting anytime in the near future, you can use that. To push that was going to be my next question. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I just want to like, as a, as a tip, um, I think the route you're going with, with having both by using the platforms available API to pull those logs is probably the best route versus using an IDP. Um, some IDPs mm -hmm. can incorrectly uh, report usage, usage statistics. Like I know Okta will um, report a person's login attempt as, sex, as successful, despite them actually mm -hmm. being able to log in or not. It's just Okta is reporting, you know, that their request to the downstream system was accepted, not if it was a valid uh, <laughs> request. Not so, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we have, we yeah. use a different service, and I'm not going to name names, but um, we noticed that a lot of the reporting there was off because the either we were having an outage, um, but Octus was successfully able to send that, but it wasn't correctly using that or reporting us to that outage, and so we had a lot of people saying, "Hey, can't get in," but then our metrics look off. And then the other thing was um, being able to report uh user accounts or the total amount of users user accounts correctly was also off because it was relying on the idp and who was assigned to the yeah. application versus like okay well we might have a hundred service accounts which i hope no one ever has that many because that's so many service accounts for a platform um minus google um yeah. but yeah it might have an additional 100 there that aren't in the identity provider because they're not actual identities um so that number can get skewed and so then your your uh, reporting for licensing can get messed up when it comes to renewals Absolutely, uh, I think I, 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 we've seen this also. So we've seen this in our own organization. We've seen this with some of the customers we work with as well. So, and that's the reason why we will double down and get more uh, of these direct integrations set up. Uh, the reason why we have the IM uh, integrations is that it, it gives you that immediate visibility into the entire estate, right? Um, and then you, uh, you identify the apps that you're really, really interested in, optimize over a period of time, get directly, uh, get the information directly from the source there. So that makes total sense. As far as the um, integrations, the apps that you have here so far, mm -hmm. um, are these all like officially built by you? Or yeah. like, I know as you said, yeah. like if whatever you don't support, we can create ourselves. Um, but of the official ones, if there's a feature or an endpoint for the API for that platform that you haven't built out yet, could we go into that and then build it ourselves? Uh, yeah, so all of these are um, uh, apps that are built by our team, and all the apps that I'm, I just mentioned are also things that we will be building. And uh, and just to give you a preview of the things that will come, right? So anything that you see in orchestration center would typically be apps that we will be adding. So these are the first cut of apps that we already have in orchestration center. You would normally get a first cut here, and then we will uh, we will add them to SaaS. Uh, the APIs are, uh, I mean, the APIs, what we have right now uh, are the same APIs that these apps use to push data out of our service. So whatever the, the apps that we use, uh, that we build, are already using the same APIs that you can use if you want to push data out of our service. So if there's, there's something that's missing there, um, uh, I think we can, we can quickly identify that and fix it. It's probably a documentation issue than uh, the actual feature itself. But everything that you see here is, a, uh, is something that you can populate and access through the APIs. So on right. the chat, we have a discussion about yes. uh, additional data sources. Yeah. And um, we know other tools use, for example, like zero bookkeeping or expense account integration yeah. or yeah. Um, extension, uh, Chrome extensions, for example, to, to go and get these reports. Is yeah. that something you're planning to support as well? Um, yes, we do plan to uh, go down that path, but um, uh, our focus for the next couple of quarters is going to be to double down and get the number of apps that we have for direct integrations and getting the usage information from these apps. Uh, uh, you know, we just want to get that app count healthy, um, and 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 also getting into this entire you know discovering uh, data from let's say financial sources and all of that. It's it's a it's a it's 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 a, it's a Kind of a shift in focus. It's not usage anymore, but rather it's it's a new type of discovery, it's spend discovery, and all of that. So, for the immediate future, we'll be focusing on just increasing the number of apps we have and being, I mean, and trying to give you better insights and uh, more actions that you can uh, take from here. Um, but then 
in the long term, we plan to add uh, integrations to finance tools, uh, all the other types of services that's possible. We will, we will be adding that as well. Yeah. Wouldn't a Chrome extension though fit more into that immediate time frame? Say, hey, we've noticed a login uh, in mm -hmm. the in the plan here. Yeah, I uh, yes, um, and that's that's one. Uh, there's another. That's that's one other source too. And we've also considered. Uh, we have an agent that runs in all. Um, I mean, our customers use an agent to uh, you know discover the devices itself. And those agents can also be enhanced to get, um, uh, you know, Chrome history and anything else that it, that's basically sitting on that particular device. So there's a few options that's available to us. Uh, we will explore those options as well. But to your point, to your question, uh, usage information first, uh, and then spend uh, once we are comfortable that we cover, let's say, the 20% of apps that contribute to 80% of uh, usage in organizations. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The problem with the with the uh, discovery agent is that the, our devices are usually not supported uh, because we're mm -hmm. running Chromebooks. Okay. And really, the yeah. only only if we actively set up the um, Linux yeah. box, we see the Linux information rather than. But that yeah, uh, there would be a Chrome uh, extension. The other thing I would say about about using a desktop agent is if people have multiple profiles of Chrome and they're using a personal profile, it might catch things that, hey, that's actually yeah. not a work thing. It's just... Yeah. yeah. Understood, Chris. Yeah, I think I think there's just something that we're still evaluating. But yeah, uh, I, I think I think the Chrome extensions and maybe extensions to other browsers is probably a more reliable way to get that to the point. Uh, yeah. Any other questions from people? Uh, I have a a question if there's no others i had a question real quick too just yeah, in, in, on the actual um SaaS management platform piece mm -hmm. of it um there's a lot of great metrics and i saw some of the charts showing kind of thresholds is there ability to kind of set alerting based on thresholds so you can kind of proactively be alerted or even just maybe alert the right procurement folks at your organization or things of that nature Right. So the only alerting we have right now is on the expiry notifications when the contracts come up for renewal. Uh, but we are uh, looking to add more alerts and uh, not just something that might be very out of the box, but rather uh, a lot of power to you in terms of reporting and, uh, and, and workflows that you can basically set up to say when something crosses, crosses a certain threshold, then you should be able to take actions on that. But right now, the only one that we have is for contract renewal, uh, expiry notifications. We'll add more uh, pretty soon. Okay, very cool. Even that much is cool. So then, yeah, any improvements there, very, yeah. very neat. Yeah, so you don't have to log in here all the time to get the info you need. Absolutely, yeah. So you, you talked about actions and, and more actions were, were coming. Um, and obviously, I know that the majority of us on this call are on Google Workspace, um, previously called G Suite. Um, yeah. And we, 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 there was a lot of other um, SaaS management tools out there that allow, allow us to do additional actions or people are using GAM to do actions on their Google Workspace accounts. What, <laughs> what actions are available at the moment within the fresh service SaaS management? Um, yeah, so let me just show that to you then. Um, so uh, the ones that you may want to perform, uh, I mean, the ones, the, the kind of actions that you may want to perform from uh, SaaS management may still be limited to, uh, let's say, removing a user or revoking access to an application. Um, let me just quickly install this, but uh, but there's this uh, through orchestration center, you can actually do a lot more, right? Uh, so let me let me just maybe quickly set this up, just create a dummy account. And then... Yeah, this would be interesting to, to see how this part of the process is done for uh, installing these add-ons. Yeah, I mean, I, I just paused my screen because I'm just putting oh. in some dummy data here. Okay. Um, but Clever. but yeah, so <laughs> no, I, I'm I'm just going to put in some dummy data. So uh, what we do is we just ask for a service account, give a config name, all the other details that you would normally put in when you when you let's say uh, create right. a service account with certain permissions. Uh, I'm just going to quickly like fill in some random information here yeah. that I can. Uh, I, I will also add then add, add the being able to pause your screen is incredible for Zoom. If only there was yeah. uh, Google Meet and other programs would allow you to pause your presentation rather than having yeah. to stop and, and, and reshare. 
yeah so i just i just install that uh, and then we'll, we'll refresh this uh, workflow and we can get started again so the kind of uh, yeah the kind of actions that you can perform here are potentially getting users creating users update users and a bunch of other operations with, with respect to user or group management that's the primary focus right now okay. and i think over a period of time we should be able we will add, keep adding more kind of actions here right but it's uh, it's right now mainly from the user and group management standpoint right okay yeah so it it could be used for a, a user creation workflow and yes. and a, a basic user deprovision workflow i guess that's correct yeah so uh, I, yeah, on that note, could I just define a specific endpoint using the uh, and then using the JSON data that you have for the login on Google mm -hmm. and send a JSON file to Google from um, your from there? Because not at the be... moment. Yeah, not at the moment. Uh, I think you would have to define those here within the fields and then push that into into G Suite. Yeah, yeah, because that would be the the way that the easiest way for for you to just say yeah you can do anything yeah yeah and these are and all essentially points. yeah and essentially that's what we're doing right so that's what we're uh, we're constructing a json from here and then pushing that to uh through middleware so yeah so that's that's probably uh something that we could explore as just giving you an option to create those json's put them somewhere and then use that yeah okay i think there's uh Okay. Any more questions from people? No. Okay. This is this is a a, a great thorough demo. You've uh, you've answered everybody's question. So what we will do is we will go around. If if those that want to be called on and uh, and ask for their their quick thoughts and opinion, can uh, can show themselves in. Uh, Yep. Also, um, Siddi, if you could stop uh, sharing your screen, then we'll yeah. get everybody back in in the large gallery. If you guys want to um, show your your video camera, so we know that you want to partake, and we'll go through. I think in alphabetical order, only because oh no, alphabetical order confuses me because I hate it when uh, when people leave and join and oh, and uh, just call on scary. people. Yeah, it go. It moves around all over the place, and I get confused. Just, just just call Getting on old. people right, in gonna... whatever order you want. All right, let's go for Chris Tucker because he's in my uh, my top left hand corner. I feel like I'm always first calling, um, which isn't that's that's fine. Uh, I I'm a maybe. I'm not a definite, um, but partly because I'm not a fresh service customer. I used to be, and I think if I was, or if I were still, then I'd want to explore it. But you can definitely see it's it, you know they've come a long way. There's still some early stages, and there's a lot to go. Uh, so I kind of want to see that develop out um, because, I mean, it's uh, there's a lot of people in this space right now, and a lot of people are having the same problem of how do we capture those products that are not direct integrations or not picking up through the IDP or whatnot. Uh, and so, I, you know, it'd be interesting to see if if Fresh Service comes up with a, with a more great, like a, a breakthrough way of catching those. Uh, but otherwise, there's just a lot out there. And if we had Fresh Service and it was bundled in, cool, maybe it would be something like I don't need another another tool. Okay, let's go over to Dominic on my top right. It's like celebrity squares. This is I'm doing. <laughs> so um, we we are a customer. We are also a partner. Um, so we we actually actually just uh, enabled a disaster management uh, plugin and haven't been able to fully set it up yet. Um, so I I do still need to experience the usage of it but there is definitely a lot of potential there and um one my my biggest gripe with the entire freshworks um product is the sustainability part running with running on, on aws servers rather than on on a green back end but that's that's just me being being picky <laughs> one 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 feature request at a time dominic I think yeah. that is that is going to become more and more Move to GCP, important. That's the biggest yes. request. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 
let's go down to my uh, bottom left and Steve. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I've used Fresh Service in the past before. Various companies I've been at uh, generally like the service. Um, it's uh, you know obviously evolved uh, a lot over the years. I was using it probably six, seven years ago when it was you know in its infancy. Um, and yeah, I, I definitely would be using this or looking at using this in uh, whatever capacity I could, if possible. Excellent, great. And finishing off my tic-tac-toe in the middle, Rose. This makes no sense to the people who haven't had the, the exact grid view <laughs> that I have. It, no, it never makes any sense. Um, so full disclosure, Tucker and I work for the same company. Um, and I have a lot of opinions about ticketing systems in general. However, I think among traditional ticketing systems, fresh service is one of the best. Um, and, you know, like Tucker said, like if we had a fresh service as our help desk platform, I think I would be inclined to want to use something like this with it, right? Like we want to do integrations with our ticketing platform today. And so I, I think in that sense, like it's a very valuable connection between those two things. Um, that said, I think you're missing some of the key ingredients to a really successful SaaS management tool, which is one is shadow IT discovery. And that's really where you're gonna get into that spend management. And that third, I call it the third option. Sometimes it's a Chrome extension with, um, for example, blissfully, it's an email integration that scans your email for invoices. Like yep. there's a there's a bunch of different ways to tackle that. And whatever you choose for your third integration really needs to get at like, we're not ever going to get to 100%. There's always going to be ways around capturing SaaS tools that people yeah. are buying or using. But whatever that third one is, just make sure you think about it very carefully, I would say, when you get to that point. Um, and then the other gap that I see is just like, it's a limitation of the APIs. Right, like we all know that there are certain things like um, Hiram just brought up with Okta, I think um, that like their login data isn't perfect because like it yeah. will tell you you authenticated, but you didn't have access. So that's not a tech, like it's, it's like three logs for a single um, authentication in Okta. And so like, we know that there are limitations to the APIs in that sense as well. And like you pointed out like, if you have an app that never ends your session, right? When you get into the world of shadow IT, it's not like I can go and set the session. Yeah. Um, and so like, or, and there are fledgling apps these days that have no admin access whatsoever, no team ability. And so um, I would just, I would caution you not to rely too much on the applications. Um, they provide a lot of data themselves, but sometimes that data is deeply flawed. Yes, yes. I think that's very helpful. That's very uh, insightful. And it's, it's a lot of validation also in the terms of uh, the kind of gaps we've seen uh, and, and the approach that we want to take too. So thanks for that. Yep. Yeah, it is, it, is, it is always about how how authentic, how valid, accurate that data is and those companies that are able, able and willing to provide a good API. Um, there's a number of people that, that don't provide any access to reporting, which is which is horrific. Uh, let's go, we got uh, the battle of the two Calebs. Who wants to unmute first? First one to unmute gets to speak. Done. Uh, Caleb Coy wins. <laughs> uh, no, first of all, Sid, uh, great demo. Thank you uh, for, for being here today. That was really cool. Um, uh, kind of similar sentiment in like not being a, a fresh customer. Um, I didn't see enough in the product as it stands right now to be compelling enough to buy like just for this. But the thing that I, I, I do really appreciate about Fresh in general uh, is that y'all are kind of trying to build this basically like one-stop shop for companies to use. And like those deep level integrations, even if the, uh, you know, if they, the features aren't necessarily as robust when you introduce it like this, uh, there's still a pretty big win if you're a Fresh uh, customer. And like that, you know, triggering a workflow off of, you know, setting the right fields in a ticket is mind blowing to me. Like, that's awesome. Uh, and I could see some really great, uh, some really great use cases for that. Um, 
So maybe someday in the future, I'll be somewhere that uses fresh and I'll be able to get my hands on it and just see how powerful it can be. Um, but again, thank you. Excellent, great. And we have our, our runner up, Caleb. I'm, I'm doing everything left-handed. That's the only reason he beat me on mute. Why? What, what's happened to the right hand? Carpal tunnel surgery. Ah, oh, okay. Oh. Okay, now I feel so, bad. That, that's, yeah, unfair race, I think. We should have um, given but, you a head start. Yeah, I don't actually use Fresh Service, but I use Fresh Desk, which is a service of Fresh Service. Um, so I use just the ticketing system, but I, I love seeing all the integrations that this one has and the ability to track things a lot better than my Google Sheets do right now. Um, so um, look forward to maybe switching in the future to Fresh Service to get all the features that that has in addition to some of these other ones. So yeah, definitely appealing um, in, in what, what you show today. Great. And uh, lastly, Hiram. Um, yeah, I, so I was a fresh desk um, customer in a different company a couple of years ago, but we ended up switching over to um, Zendesk from fresh desk. But I think if we had, um, I don't know if fresh service was around then, but um, if it was, that would have made things a little bit more interesting because there's a lot of different features and areas that are covered there that are, more in demand now, like um, the workflow engine that you have is a great, is a great segue or at least uh, entryway into identity governance and um, being able to create those profiles based off those approvals for applications that need to be assigned out. Um, and the uh, ability to actually manage your vendor uh, relationships, it's, um, that, that's another area that we actually um, at WorkEver have like set, we have these, those three key areas that you're working in, we have those separate separated into different platforms and we have to have to create um, integrations between them all um, just because those are gaps or not really gaps, but those aren't areas that those platforms focus on. And just to see that you have one platform where it's all just native in one area is really nice to hear and see. Um, I dropped one last question just to see if you're soccer or bed ramp um, certified because um, that, that would uh, make it even more interesting um, to have those kind of certifications, at least from us. Um, but yeah, I, it looks, you look like, it looks like you have a really good product. Um, being robust, um, like Caleb said, is a really great way to stay competitive and um, just keep, just keep working with those APIs and less leaning on IDPs and, think I think will be great. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that, uh, Hiram. Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, that, that's a good suggestion. And also regarding the security, I've just shared a, a link. Uh, we are so compliant. I'm not sure about the FedRAM part. I need to check with my team, but uh, we are so compliant. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll just give my closing thoughts. Um, I, I am, like some others, a fresh service customer, have been for a couple of years, I was uh, adverse to ticketing systems, um, and and my team was was fearful of us deploying a ticketing system. But they've been very happy with Freshworks. I think it is a a great. Uh, been very happy with Fresh Service. I think it is a great ITSM platform. Um, it's great for for your end user support. It's great for asset management and and device uh, information. And I think adding in applications and, and, and continuing the, the user management path is is the perfect right step um, to make it a, a full featured platform. Um, I Even though I have fresh service at the moment, uh, we I have another tool that provides some of the visibility that I need. Um, and, and we have some internal tools for some of the actions that, that we're using. Um, so, but I, it's, it's not something that we're looking to deploy at the moment, but it is certainly uh, one of those applications to watch as this SaaS management market carries on growing and, and developing. Um, and it's great to see uh, fresh works and fresh service in it. And I, I thank you for your time, Sid, this afternoon to be a uh, be part of our Solve Tank, our SaaS Ops Live virtual event, Shark Tank type event. So thank you from me and thank you from everybody else. Thanks, Colin. Thanks for having me on. Take care. And cut.